Number one, we have this compound, lead, carbon and hydrogen, and we have to find out how much hydrogen actually do we need so that we have a percentage of 6.19%. Now, you can do your empirical formula approach and all that, but that's another way to do it. If you want, if you are confused, that means we can try um, the method of trial and error. So percentage of hydrogen, we have to find out the total first. Lead, looking at the data booklet, 207. Carbon, there's 8 of them. And then we don't know how much X is, multiplied by 1. So this is a total MR. And the amount contributed by hydrogen will be X multiplied by 1. So this is a fraction of hydrogen, and then multiplied by 100%. So what you can do is you can substitute the options into X here, uh, meaning put 55 five or 66, six, 16, 16, 20, 20, and see which of these combinations will give you 6.19%, and that will be your X. So in this case, if you try until 20, you will see that you will give us the correct percentage. Okay, otherwise, you can do what you can do is also you can form this equation and then you solve for your x. Number two, finding out the concentration of the bleach, sodium chloride. What we have will be the info will be the moles of oxygen gas, 0 0.035. By ratio, we will also have 0 0.035 moles of your sodium chloride. This is the volume of the sodium chloride. So moles divided by volume expressed in dm cube. You will have our concentration, 1.4 moles per dm cube. So find out the number of moles based on the ratio and then divide by the volume. Ionization energy, this is the removal of one electron, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We have to find out how many electrons there are in the outer shell. So what we need to do is find the difference between one and the next one. So we have all these differences calculated out and then we see that there is a big jump when we try to remove the seventh electron. Okay, there's a big jump over here, big increase. What th does that mean? Six of them are on the same outer shell. The seventh one is found one shell further in. So it has six outer electrons. Okay, that corresponds to this configuration. Okay, two and four in the shell quantum two. Number four, finding out the number of unpaired p orbitals. Unpaired p orbitals starting from 13. Okay, I'll show the configuration here. Let's say we have 13 electrons, a quick filling up. One, two, three, four, five, single first, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So we will have one unpaired p orbital, 14, 2 unpaired, 15, 3 unpaired. After 15 onwards, we start to have to pair them up. 16, 2 unpaired, 17, 1 unpaired, and 18, all of them will be paired up. So it will increase to 15, and then it will start to decrease, which gives us option D. Which statement shows the boiling point of methane? Why is it higher than neon? We can do by elimination. Molecule of methane has greater mass than neon. Methane 16, C plus 4H. Neon 20, so this is not true. 
methane has a smaller mass. Molecule, molecules of methane form hydrogen bonds. Methane do not have hydrogen bonds. It's a non-polar molecule. So this is also not correct. Molecules of methane have stronger intermolecular attraction. This will be true. If you have stronger intermolecular attraction, you will have more and you require more energy to separate the molecules. So boiling point will be higher. If you check the last one, methane is polar, neon is not. Methane, as mentioned just now, is a non-polar molecule. It has instantaneous dipole, induced dipole. Number six, comparing the products of the reaction compared to the organic reactant in the beginning. What angles do they have? So I'll show you the results that we have. For bromoethane and ethanolic sodium hydroxide, this is the beginning. Ethanolic sodium hydroxide will remove bromine and hydrogen. You eliminate it and form a double bond. So at the start, this is 109.5 degrees tetrahedral and then we have our alkene which is 120 degrees. Complete combustion of methane, methane tetrahedral again, carbon dioxide linear. So 109.5 to 120. Methane and excess chlorine, what we have will be substitution reaction. Methane and chlorine, excess, even if we do replace all of them, the hydrogen, both are still tetrahedral, so they have the same angle. Finally, polymerization of ethene. Ethene, 120 degrees. When we polymerize, they form single bonds they are tetrahedral around the carbon atoms comes 109.5 so we want the product to have a smaller bond angle than beginning right, that will be our option D iodine produces purple vapor what is happening is we are actually separating a molecule of iodine to another molecule. So we are not breaking the covalent bonds. We are not breaking apart this bond between the I2. Right? It's actually an I2 attracting another I2. So that is our induced dipole, induced dipole attraction. And the purple species will be just I2 gas. Hydrogen peroxide decomposing, and we have this equation. What is the enthalpy change of reaction for this reaction? We have heat of formation provided for us. So, in general, heat of formation of products minus heat of formation of reactants, we will get heat of reaction for the above reaction. So, products we have formation of water so to form one mole of water is 285 in this reaction we have two moles of water formed so 2 multiplied by heat of formation of water heat of formation of oxygen O2 is not uh, required to be calculated because it is forming of an element that is defined to be 0 so we have this for the water Heat of formation of reactants, we have hydrogen peroxide but 2 moles. So to form 2 moles of hydrogen peroxide, we must multiply by 2 and multiply by 187.8. And then we do our calculations to form this, to follow this reaction, we will require exothermic reaction 196 kilojoules per mole. So Heat of formation of products, subtract heat of formation of reactants, but take note the 
multiples that we have to do okay because this is only for one mole 